We want to show you two examples of how we use the sine and cosine of a sum. First I'm going to start by saying uh, I want to know what the sine of 15 degrees is. Not 15 degrees, 75 degrees. I need to do a sum here. Sorry, sine of 75 degrees. So I think of 75 as the sine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. And the reason I do that is because I know something about 30 and 45 individually. So I want to use that information to find something about the combined angle 75. Okay. My uh, identity says that the sine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees is the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. And so somewhere off on the side here I've got information that I know about my 30-60-90 triangle. Here's the 30 degree angle there. So 1, 2 square root of 3 and my 45-45 right triangle here. 1, 1 square root of 2. I got that 45 degree angle in there. So I can see information about 30 degrees and 45 degrees. Put it together to get 75 degrees. All right. Sine of 30 degrees is a half. Cosine of 45 degrees is 1 over the square root of 2. Cosine of 30 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees, cosine radical 3 over 2. Sine of 45 degrees, 1 over the square root of 2. I already have a common denominator there, so I can write it down as a single fraction. I got 2 radical 2 on the bottom, I've got a 1 plus the square root of 3 on the top. Okay. There's the sine of 75 degrees. Likewise, I could do the uh, cosine of 75 degrees um, by again thinking in terms of the cosine, cosine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. All right. The identity for cosine is the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. So, looking at these pictures, I know information about 30 degrees and 45 degrees, so here we go. Cosine of 30 degrees, radical 3 over 2. Cosine of 45 degrees, 1 over radical 2. And the sine of 30 degrees would be a half. There's a minus sign in here. And the sine of 45 degrees is sine opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over the square root of 2. And I can uh, write that as a single fraction. I got a 2 radical 2 there. And I got a radical 3 minus 1 here. Okay. So by knowing information about the small angles, 30 and 45, I can find information about the combined angle, 70 to 5. Okay. Next, um, it's times when you don't necessarily know precisely what the angle is, but you know some information about it. Okay. For instance, here we go. Suppose I had this information. Suppose I know that both A and B uh, for convenience sake here, let's, let's say A and B are in the first quadrant, are in quadrant number one, and I know that the sine of angle A is three-fourths, and maybe I know that the sine of angle B is oh, two-thirds. Right. I don't know what either angle is, I just know what the sine is. Um, I could probably use an inverse trig function, inverse sine, to figure out what A and B are, but I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't need that. This information right here tells me a lot about angle A, right? If this is angle A right here, then I know that the sine is 3 over 4 using Pythagoras, the square root of 16 minus 9, so this is the square root of 7 over here, right? So I got all three sides. I got all six trig functions. If I know one trig function, I know all six. Um, up to a plus or minus sign. That's why I had to tell you quadrant one. Because if if I didn't tell you that, then maybe maybe it was over here in the second quadrant. So it was positive three for the y and four for the but the x would have been negative. Um, but anyway, here we are. And then b. Right now, notice b is not not, not this angle here or anything. It's just it's got its own triangle. Uh, I don't know what it looks like. Something. Right. 
and this is angle B down here, the opposite side is 2, the hypotenuse is 3, I can use Pythagoras to say 9 minus 4 is the square root of 5 on that side. And now I've got all six trig functions of angle B. So here we go. What's the um, what's the sine of A plus B? Well, according to the identity, it's the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second plus the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second. Now, notice that I did not plug a 3 fourths in for A and a 2 thirds in for B because A is not 3 fourths. A is an angle. The angle gets put into the sine function and what comes out is 3 fourths. Okay? So this right here, sine of A, the output is 3 fourths. Likewise here, sine of B, the output is 2 thirds. What's the output of the cosine B? Well, when you plug B into the cosine, you get the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. That would be the square root of 5 over 3. And likewise, when you plug A into the cosine function, you get adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. That's the square root of 3 over 4. All right. And so, uh, I can make that a single fraction. I've got a 12 as a denominator. I've got a 3 radical 5 plus 2 radical 3. I'll make that look a little more like a 2. Not a lot, but a little bit more like a 2. Um, and there we go. There's the sine of a plus b. While I'm here, I might as well do the cosine of a plus b. Um, remember, a and b are angles, so when you add them, you get another angle. You plug that into the cosine, uh, and it's going to give us this result. The cosine of a times the cosine of b minus the sine of A times the sine of B. And again, keep careful track. Okay, what's that? Keep careful track of what's the angle being put in and what's the ratio of sides that's coming out of these trig functions. Right? Again, the three fourths and the two thirds are not the angles, they're the ratio of sides. Okay, so I'm gonna wait here. Uh, what's the cosine of A? I'm looking at this picture here. Cosine of A is radical seven over four. What's the cosine of B? I'm over here. Radical five over three. What's the sine of A? Must be 3 over 4. And the sine of B is 2 thirds. Actually, that was in for given information, wasn't it? So, I've got a 12 in the denominator, and I've got a square root of 35 right there, minus 6. So there we go. Um, there's a couple different ways that we use this uh, these identities. Uh, we'll see a few more in future videos.